In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Ezra chapter 9, verses 10 through 15, where I'll answer the question, what do I do when I've sinned? Ezra chapter 9, verses 10 through 15 says, And now, O our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken your commandments, which you commanded by your servants, the prophets, saying, The land that you are entering to take possession of it is a land impure, with impurity of the peoples of the lands, with their abominations, that they have filled it from end to end with their uncleanness. Therefore, do not give your daughters to their sons, neither take their daughters for your sons, and never seek their peace or prosperity, that you may be strong and eat the good of the land, and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great guilt, seeing that you, our God, have punished us less than our iniquities deserved, and have given us such a remnant as this, Shall we break your commandments again and intermarry with the peoples who practice these abominations? Would you not be angry with us until you consumed us so that there should be no remnant nor any to escape? O Lord, the God of Israel, you are just, for we are left a remnant that has escaped as it is today. Behold, we are before you in our guilt, for none can stand before you because of this. The exiles, upon returning to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, did something that was profoundly wrong. They broke this command that the Lord had given to the people of Israel as they were entering into the promised land. This command that they would not intermarry with the peoples that they were displacing as the Lord gave them the land, but instead that the Israelites would remain pure by not intermarrying with other people groups. And the reason for this is quite simple. The Canaanites who dwelt in the land were being judged by God. Their iniquity has been completed, and that is why he raised up his nation Israel to expel them from the land. Here are three thoughts from Ezra chapter 9, verses 10 through 15, answering the question, what do I do when I've sinned? Thought number one, confess. The people of Israel who had intermarried with these other folks confessed their sin before the Lord. They recognized that they had done wrong and they admitted their guilt before their heavenly father and before their nation. The same is true of us. When we sin, we must confess that we have done it. We must acknowledge before God and man that we have violated his commands. Because it is only after you have confessed your sins that you can know and have confidence that you've been forgiven of them. Thought number two, repent. So after you confess, after you acknowledge that you have done this sinful thing, you must then repent, meaning you must change the behavior. So if you confess that you are a liar and then you just continue on lying, the confession doesn't really do very much, does it? You obviously don't take the fact that you are a liar very seriously, else you would stop the behavior. Repentance is turning from your sinfulness. And what happens here with the people of Israel who have intermarried with the Canaanite folks who were left there, they ended up putting away or divorcing these folks that they had married. So that way they could turn from this sin that they had engaged in. Thought number three, obedience. This is what you do after you have confessed and repented. You lead a life of obedience. You obey the law of God and you do the things that he has said. Now, is anybody going to do this perfectly? No, you're not going to do this perfectly. But you still make the attempt to live faithfully to the law of God. You don't engage deliberately or with fervor the same sinful practices as before, but instead, as a part of repenting and turning from your sin, you establish patterns of obedience before God. This is what you do when you've sinned. And as you do this, you can trust and have faith that Christ Jesus has forgiven you 
of your sinfulness because he is gracious and merciful to the worst of sinners. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Ezra chapter 6 through 10. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.